Lebanon is on the front lines in the fight against ISIS, Al Qaeda, and Hezbollah. The Lebanese people of all faiths are working together to keep their country, and you know this, and we've been discussing this at great length, their country safe and prosperous. Welcome back to The World Over. That was President Trump welcoming the Prime Minister of Lebanon this week in Washington. In addition to terrorism, the Syrian refugee crisis, and the plight of Christians in the Middle East was also on the agenda. My next guest is a Maronite Catholic priest, and he's been appointed by the Apostolic Union of Clergy in Rome to be a special envoy to clerics here in the U.S. His mission is to highlight the ongoing persecution of Christians in the region. He's here in Washington this week meeting with members of Congress and the U.S. State Department. For the latest, we're joined by Father Andre Mahana. Thank you for being with Thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you. God now, bless now, you. Father, you heard the president say the different faiths of Lebanon are working together. Are they for peace? They're trying to. In Lebanon, at least, mm -hmm. more so than in any other country in the world, they are trying to. Definitely, Patriarch Rai, as the head of the Catholic Assembly of Patriarchs and Bishops, and as the president of the Catholic Orthodox Assembly, he's on straightforward and consistent touching bases basically with the, the Sunnis and the Shias that are in Lebanon. That's mm. why Lebanon is important to pursue as place for faith, peace, love, and coexistent consensual democracy. Yeah. Religious leaders are strong. And there's a strong Catholic community there. Absolutely. It's been there from time immemorial. It's been there then from time from the Jewish tribes before mm. they became Christian and then through mm. Jesus. And of course, they've been time through centuries. Mm. Uh, talk about the Syrian refugee crisis. I mean, we have a, a large number of Syrians coming there, many without papers. And the UN does not permit many of these people to receive any medical care. They're not accepted in the hospitals. What's the state of things and what can you do or we do to change that? Right. I just shared with the State Department and uh, trusted the people there and in the White House um, information and maps about what are the Syrian refugees in Lebanon. We have about 2 million Syrian refugees mm. in Lebanon that the Lebanese government, with the help of churches, had um, vetted and made a statistic for them, basically. Mm. These are allocated all over the country. Lebanon is a refugee camp. Lebanon has no UN refugee camps. Ah. UN never shared the, the list of the refugees of Iraqi or of Syrian refugees with the Lebanese government. They refused mm. to give it to them. So we had to waste a lot of time and run on our own to make those uh, refugee lists, basically. The concentration in the Beka Valley is very scary in our cell because um, these are the most probably questionable refugees that we have. Amongst the 95% of these Syrian refugees are not Christians. They are in one type of um, religion, basically. Amongst Islam, they are Sunni Muslims. Mm -hmm. And amongst the Syrian refugees, which are about 2 million, 43% come from non-disturbed areas inside Syria. Forty-three mm. percent. So why are they leaving? Why aren't they staying in the homeland? If they're if they if they can live there and they're not in a war-torn area of Syria, why are they coming to Lebanon? This is the question that was exchanged between the president and the prime minister, and of course uh, between many agencies. Um, you know, UN needs to collaborate more with the crisis towards giving rights to minorities and better define who are the refugees and respecting Lebanon's boundaries and assisting in keeping people safe. Why are they coming? There are only potential answers. They receive money from the UN. Their children are most likely involved in certain fights, whether mm. pro-government or pro-rebels, pro-ISIS, pro-al-Nusra mm. inside Syria. Of course, there is a UN money that goes to them, and I know information from Lebanon that that money, they're being taxed on that money, and they send it back, but their homes are safe. Their properties are safe. They're not like the Christians who are mm. suffering inside Syria, Aleppo, Two, two million buildings have been totally destroyed in Aleppo. It was the largest Christian community, Armenian, Catholics, Maronites, yeah. um, Orthodox. They're all destroyed. So, of course, there is a motive for them coming to Lebanon. Mm. They destroyed the infrastructure. There is 70 percent more birth rates amongst refugees from Syria than amongst the nationals of Lebanon. Wow. Imagine a country, four million people. There are two million refugees with a 70 percent birth rate on top of the Lebanese population. Mm. Go figure what might happen in Lebanon, specifically towards its consensual democracy, which consists in demographic balance between all the religious groups, basically, mm. in that country. So it seems what you're saying is you have these 
predominantly Sunnis coming in and they're gobbling resources Absolutely. that frankly they don't need from a Christian population that is, in your words, in the words of a letter I read the, in your hand, uh, you've said there's a systematic persecution of Christians in the Middle East and that this is perpetuated by policies of the West. Which policies? The policies, first of all, start with our immigration policies. All of it needs reform. It's not about a ban. Mm -hmm. It's more than a ban. It's to begin with the consulate generals inside Egypt, inside Sudan, inside North Africa, inside Lebanon, mm -hmm. inside Iraq. Who are we giving visas to and why do Christian visas get rejected? Why mm -hmm. do we apply three times for a Christian person? We don't allow family reunification. We send the mom three times to come see and visit her children in America, and she's rejected. And I can, if there are cameras allowed inside our embassies, I can show you how many non-Christians will receive visas versus the Christians. I told the administration mm. this. I, I, I told the State Department about this, and I pray from my trusted voices, I believe, inside that they're going to investigate this. Mm -hmm. Well, the president tried to give preference to Christian refugees. The court stopped that. Right. They stopped that, that, that uh, executive order. We do not want the preference. Unfortunately, the president is speaking in order of preference because there is injustice happening. Mm -hmm. When there is a justice being applied from the immigration officer, you don't need those order of preferences. Which mm -hmm. one you take? The reality, as Bishop Zaiden, my bishop, says, it hurts. The Christian people are in pain. Mm -hmm. They are in pain. Why you're not giving them order of emergency priority, not preference? Yeah. Priority is the real world because they are under persecution. There is a genocide going and they need and somehow priority. Yet you have uh, the State Department lawyers, I'm told. Now, these are many of these staff lawyers appointed by the previous administration who are trying to wash the word genocide and Christian away from much of the documentation. What is happening and why is that taking place? Uh, partially you are because right. Because the, the Obama administration, uh, Secretary John Kerry, declared it a genocide. They did it in the last administration. One of the reasons why my bishop kept sending me, I do have good news and I do believe this is exclusive, but I cannot say too much about it. Okay. I do have good news that the word genocide passed. And it ends somehow, you will hear about it next week in an official document that it will continue to be utilized and it will remain genocide against Christians and other minorities. My trusted... In the State Department in documentation. In the State Department documentation. You will hear about it next week. Now, Congress has already allocated $1.3 billion to refugee relief, but only $10 million gets allocated to Christians and then there's no guarantee it's going to reach them. Right. So how do you how do you make sure that the money is actually reaching this this truly endangered population? Ray, change the mindset in America, as I do with every congressman and woman and every senator and every department. I tell him, use your conscience. Like Mother Teresa said once to somebody who's dying, Mother Teresa asked that dying person, what would you like me? How do you feel? She said, I feel I want to say thank you and I trust in the Lord. And they asked Mother Teresa herself, what would you have said? She said, I am in pain, I am dying, I'm scared, I am cold, I am hungry. Mm. Christians are cold, Christians are hungry, Christians are being persecuted, Christians keep trusting the West. That's why I say we do not want to disappoint those people. Change the mindset in the United States of America to tell them there is no perplexity in giving priority to Christians and minorities who are persecuted. You're not doing something that is politically incorrect. You're signed them by God's laws and his outreach to the poor, to the oppressed. I want to play this for you very quickly. This is from President Trump's uh, meeting with the Lebanese Prime Minister. Watch this. Supporting the humanitarian needs of displaced Syrian, Syrian citizens as close to their home country as possible is the best way to help most people. America is proud to stand with those who have the courage to stand up to terrorism and take responsibility for affairs in their own region. That's all fine, well, and good, but you pointed out just a moment ago the demographic, the coming demographic shift that could be taking place in Lebanon because you've got two million refugees and they're having a lot of children. Absolutely. That is no doubt going to change things. Your patriarch, the Lebanese Catholic patriarch, Rai, warned, and I reported this last week, 
that two million Syrian refugees in Lebanon are straining the fabric of the country, in his words, and that, that the costs of the refugees are causing economic difficulties. So what should be done? What should be done is our president is a very educatable person who has a great conscience, I believe, in this matter. And I'm not saying, and I'm not saying for other political matters. Mm -hmm. Being educatable and being open the way he opened to me personally and told me I will try to help as much as possible. Mm -hmm. We need to continue to educate the president about Lebanon's uniqueness in the Middle East and its fabric and its consensual democracy and its religious freedom. Mm -hmm. That's why yesterday I was on the side of the meetings with, uh, which were taking place uh, between the pre president and our prime, the prime minister of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. I was somewhere and I was stating the protocol to be full and complete need to address the president of Lebanon, the prime minister of Lebanon, a Shia personality probably, mm -hmm. and the patriarch of the Maronite church. Mm -hmm. So when the patriarch comes in October they all need to be given equal opportunity to be heard and the president needs to sit and listen to them only then the president can make better distinction and decision for now safety zones inside Syria are the way to go it doesn't seem reachable at this point otherwise mm. the president would have delivered yeah. that yesterday in his announcement but the mm. church definitely wants to promote safety zones inside Syria and try to return as many as possible people in order to avoid Be because those that, it sounds like that's the ultimate goal here. yes you sir. want to return I mean you've got 43 percent of Syria in Lebanon right correct now. so you've got to we got to return these people to their to their homeland to their right. homes to either repopulate or rebuild the question is how do you do that and can you see the reluctance on the part of Americans, you're an American citizen, to uh, bringing refugees out of their homeland, out of the region, bringing them all the way across the sea to a foreign place like America, and suddenly trying to weave them into this foreign landscape and after dropping them in. Is that the best way forward? No, it's never. The best way forward is to make distinction between internally displaced people, mm -hmm. the people who are looking for economic better wealth mm -hmm. to run away from their countries. There is a hijra factor that we must no longer deny. Mm -hmm. Inside Islam, there is a sector that they want to do a forced migration called hijra for the purpose of um, benefiting Islam from global presence and somehow paid by our democratic values, paid by the goodness, including of the Catholic Church, um, charity foundations, uh -huh. for God's sake, in the world, mm -hmm. and specifically in America. Do so you believe there's an intent to come and repopulate Europe? There America. is an intent, and this is not a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. We suffered from it yep. in the Middle East. We yep. know no, it. You I see mean, it all the time. Yeah. We see it all the time. I think Americans and Europeans, they owe it to themselves to be a little bit smarter mm -hmm. and uh, not to keep hiding themselves, saying there is mm -hmm. no forced migration as a hijra phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And then there is the persecuted. Once you see and you look at all of this, you can return these people back to their homes. Unfortunately, I appeal to the president, to the senators, to the congressmen and women, please take the issues of these peoples on a move in the world from the political agendas. This is a crisis that might end up destroying the United States, destroying a civilization that we know it as a Judeo-Christian civilization, and destroying the possibility of a peace in the world if we continue um, lying to the people, confusing their conscience, specifically amongst the young American people who do not know any longer right from wrong, who do not know how to distinguish between the right of a Muslim person to express their own faith, whereas to stand against those who from the same that religion killing the Christians and raping the children, selling them in the market mm. and doing a sale of organ or sex slavery, which we saved yeah, which many of them, which is happening, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, thank you for your work, Father Andre Mahana, and you can help father in his work visit save christian middle east